Welcome everybody to the Mind, Body, and Social. I'm your host, Coach Steve Toth, and also the founder of Conscious Evolution Media. And our guest today is Samantha Martin, and she is a life coach, and she's joining us from Pennsylvania. Uh, welcome to the show. Thank uh, you. Sam. Thank you. It's good, to, it's good to have you. And uh, I think what we're going to talk about today, the theme for the show is uh, personal truth and our ability to express it to ourselves and to others. But before we do that, um, I'm going to ask you the same question I ask every other guest, which is, if I took away that title of yours that uh, I just mentioned, which is a life coach, and any other title that or name that anybody has ever uh, has called you, uh, what would be left? Who is really Samantha Martin? Well, Samantha is, um, what you'd have left is me, the truth of me, which is uh, a lot of laughter, a lot of joy, a dollop of mischief, and uh, enough sorrow that I appreciate the joy, and a deep passion for um, being conscious in my life and helping others find that same path. Fantastic. So I'm sure that, uh, just like myself, you weren't always conscious. Or maybe you were. <laughs> no. But, but you may, you may, you probably were not aware of, just like I, I wasn't, uh, even when I was. Um, so could you, or would you be willing to share with the viewers a little bit about those times when, when you were not conscious? What was your life like, if you can remember it? I can remember it very well. Um, my life was, oh, it was so different. I, it was kind of a, almost like a fog. Um, I, I didn't, um, I wasn't as connected to anything I did, to my choices, to my, the people I cared about. Um, I had a lot of bad and even dangerous relationships. Um, I always questioned it, though. I was always a questioning person, so I was constantly um, asking myself, why, 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 why? Um, but it didn't sink in until I was in my 20s. Got it. So if you weren't connected to you, uh, who do you think you were connected to? <laughs> I believe a, I was... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I believe two things. One, I, I believe firmly that underneath it all, I... I was connected to me. I was just so in denial about what was my truth, which is why truth is such an important factor for me and why I coach on it. Um, because it was there. It was underneath everything. It kept me alive when I was in very dark times. But I, And I was connected to um, what I think of as a higher power. Beyond that, I mimicked the people around me. I... Um, I tried to fit in where I where it was you know it was uncomfortable but I tried um, so it was kind of like a hidden connection if that makes sense because it was kind of there and it kind of kept pulling me but I wasn't manifesting. Oh uh, sure. All right. So the reason I'm, obviously I'm asking these questions and maybe it's not obvious but it's obvious to me and to you probably is to see if people that are watching viewers that are watching now or later on uh, there was the replay if. Um, if they can identify maybe some of some of the things that you are mentioning um, uh, with themselves, uh, because I remember when I was not conscious, I um, I didn't even I didn't even care to explore the conversation. Like like I I wasn't aware that there was anything else other than what I was doing. <laughs> Does that make sense? That's really it does. Fun. It does. Um, I, uh, you know, I was always a curious George, so to speak, which is funny because that's actually my middle name. But um, I, like you said, I didn't, I didn't care enough to do anything about it. It just didn't. It, it almost slid off me. I wasn't allowing it to connect to me. Mm -hmm. You know, like things people would say profound things. I'd be like, uh huh, mm hmm, sure, whoosh. Yeah, so, so, so what I wanted to get to is that, is that um, I, I feel that w when this journey really, really starts to begin, I mean, we're always on our journey, but in terms of, in terms of us being aware is a very, is a very special moment when we, when finally that light bulb goes on and we are aware 
and um, we can basically stand aside and witness ourselves. And I'd like to explore that with you, if I may. Absolutely. So, do you remember uh, that special moment? Um, I still have moments like that. <laughs> <laughs> on a regular basis where I go, wow, this is Share, profound. share, share. But um, I have them all the time. But I remember when I was younger and having um, one of my first big aha moments was I was around 18. And, uh, you know, life is tumultuous when you're 18. Everything's very major. And uh, I had a breakup. And I got on a plane and went to visit a family friend out in Arizona who just happened to be um, participatory in the Hopi Indian tribe out there. And I spent uh, 10 days with her and uh, interacting with, I got to meet a medicine person. Uh -huh. And um, it, was, it was an aha moment. Another culture um, being introduced to other beliefs, much more natural beliefs and perceptions about how the body works and how your mind works in, in, in con concord with your body and um, it took taking me out of my normal environment you know my daily dramatic life of an 18 year old um, and and it, it was just so new I got to be somebody else entirely and I, I could step out of my own way and just breathe and I found that to be incredibly profound Wow that is so cool and what what you're what what you're sharing is reminding me <clears throat> of a time when I was in Arizona and I was doing one of those sweat lodge experiences. Have you ever done that? I did not get to do that. No. Uh huh. Well, I'm I'd telling like you. like to. <laughs> and anybody out there that that is curious enough about what is a sweat lodge, if 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 you want to feel like being reborn again, <laughs> that's a good way that's a good way to experience it because what what it is is you are in a tent, and and I of course did it with um, Native Indians, mm -hmm. and um, usually, you know, at, at least six or eight people are in the tent, and they don't, and, and you know what they do is they close the tent and there's um, hot rocks in the middle, and you mm -hmm. sit around the hot rocks, and then what ends up happening is they keep putting more and more hot rocks on, and uh, it gets hotter and hotter and hotter. To the point where you don't think that you can take it anymore. Like if you, if it gets any more hotter, you're gonna die. And uh, it does get hotter. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't, and you don't die. No. And, and what's great is, I mean, you want to get out of there, but they won't, they won't let you. <laughs> they bar, they bar the tent, right? Yes, yes. And and what's cool is something, something transforms when. We don't believe that we can, we can survive something like that, and then an, an incredible thing happens. Is all of a sudden they stop, they open the tent, and you get to go out. And when you go out, it's like it, it felt like for me that I was just being born again. I was just gonna say rebirth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was fantastic. But what was really cool about that experience is when I was young. Uh, when I was in elementary school, we had a teacher that broke all the rules in the school, and instead of teaching us whatever he was supposed to teach us, he had he had a book that was a very thick book, and it was about an American story, uh, the Indians, and and then what the you know what the Americans were doing to them. So it was it was a story like that, and we were so engaged, like. When he started to read this book, hmm. and he always read several chapters in every class, and we were so engaged, we were in the story every time. And then when I did this, um, when I did this thing, that this trip in Arizona with the sweat lodge, this Indian, Native Indian, uh, came to me and asked me to be in charge of something uh, in the ceremony, and. And he kneeled down, and I kneeled down, and for a moment, I had this flash, and I was back in the story of the book that my teacher was reading me. Isn't that oh, interesting? That's phenomenal, though. That's incredible. Wow! And it was like, oh my God! It's like powerful. It was, it was connected. 
Yeah. Somehow. Yeah, yeah it absolutely. A, it was a very, very cool experience. So let's explore uh, this this thing called truth because it's very it's a very interesting subject for me uh, mm -hmm. to talk about because um, it's very it's a very loose subject because people go truth. What are you talking about? Yeah, truth isn't fact, and truth is also very personal. You know, it's always yeah. based on your perception. Yeah. So so let's let's explore it some. So so what what is it that attracted you to to truth? This is very interesting to me because. I actually run a show called the Living Consciously TV show that I've been running for two years. That that the basis of the entire show is about our ability to express our truth in the moment of truth. Yeah, people are afraid of the truth. They're afraid of their own truth. I think because, um, well, I have a lot of opinions on why. I think some of it has to do with. Uh, Unfortunately, the way our society, there isn't what is true. I mean, we were talking earlier. Reality TV isn't real. You know, where's our where's our truth meter? Um, I think. Well, that, what is yours? What's your truth? How do you uh, know? When I'm sorry. My my truth meter. Mm -hmm. Um. I had to find I had to find what inside. It was a feeling. There's inside me. I have a very clear feeling when when something's not true, and oh, for a long time in my life, when I wasn't listening to that feeling, I I misinterpreted it or I ignored it, and I just it just felt odd. Uh -huh. And as I uh, started, wait a minute. okay. So what you're saying is is you have you have like this um, this barometer that says just like the temperature. Mm -hmm. um, that you have a feeling when something isn't true, but what about when something is? Same thing. I have a feeling. Uh -huh. Okay. It, can, it you feels... it for, can you describe it for our viewers? What, where is it? Is it in uh, the it, Yeah, for me, it's in the solar plexus. Uh -huh. And it feels like a perfectly clear, deep breath. No muscle tension, no stress, no strain. We're like that perfect note of a bell. It's it's a it's a moment of perfection and connection. Mm -hmm. If I said if I said I I I am the same way, but I'm associating that feeling with joy, would that make sense? Absolutely. If yeah. it feels good and it's joyful, then it's the right thing to do. I I can go with that. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think joy is is directly linked to truth. Um, if you're lying, it's hard to be actually joyful. You can you can put on a happy face and play the part, but yeah, actually, you can fake it. But I think everybody yeah. knows that you're faking it. Yeah, you can tell, <laughs> can't you, when you when you're talking to somebody? Especially it's, women. I think women <laughs> have somehow women have a, a lie detector. <laughs> it, it's true. Because I remember I remember when I was in my non-conscious mode of life, I was a very I thought I was a very good liar, and I lied all the time. Really? <laughs> nice. It's good that you know this about yourself. <laughs> and you know what's funny? No, I didn't. I didn't say that. That's how I am today, because I'm not. I, I don't. I don't lie anymore. I mean, but once in a while, maybe I, I do. But, what's fascinating but it's not, is that I was it's the not same the way. standard. It's not the standard um, uh, business as usual. But back yeah. then, for me, that was business as usual. I, I was the I, same way. I I really? lied. I I. Glossed over the truth. I I lied to myself, so I I, I lied to other. You know, it didn't. It oh, I didn't, lied to myself and to others. Yeah. Yeah, and and the now point, to the point that I got so good at it that I believe my own lies. Yeah, <laughs> I know, right? That's when, you, that's when you look in the mirror and go, Oh God, what have I done? Um, <laughs> you know, I've sold myself the land in Florida, uh -huh. but but um, I uh, now lying. It I I I, get, I, I feel almost sick. When I do it. it, it is a whole body sensation of oh, what did I do? You know. I I gotta I gotta tell you a story because this is just came to me. So when I was a teenager, I you know I probably have mentioned it to you, but I know a lot of people on the network know this that I was born in a communist country and I I was born in Hungary in Budapest, uh -huh. and and most most young people back then when I was a teenager, very much looked up to America and to the hippies and um, to the music and all that stuff. And the English language was a very cool thing, except <clears throat> nobody spoke it 
because the, the only the only language we spoke uh, in Hungary back then is Hungarian, which is our native language, yes. and Russian. Uh, everybody okay. everybody had to take Russian for eight years um, in school. Mm -hmm. So um, this is this is something I did, and I perfected it. I uh, I loved music so much. Uh, I love I loved the Led Zeppelin, the Beatles, the the Bee Gees, the Rolling Stones, and I learned all the songs. That's awesome. And, and but but I don't mean that I knew what the words meant. I just knew how to spoke them. Yes. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and we used to go with my friends. We used to go um, just all over all over the place uh, in town to pick up chicks, and I would. <laughs> Pretend that I was American, <laughs> and I was saying, I was saying, I was saying those words from like "Stairway to Heaven" to some yes. poor chick. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> but nobody knew, nobody knew what the hell I was talking about. Oh, but God. everybody bought it. That's that. That's brilliant. That, that's brilliant. I gotta tell you, that's one of the best stories I've heard and in a boy, long time. And boy, did 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 I get chicks? That's, I was gonna say, did it work? <laughs> yes, it worked. Well, it would work in reverse here if you said anything in Russian or Hungarian. Chicks love that too. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, women like foreign language. Yeah, well, I still speak several, so. I'm and jealous. I'm, and I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I don't. I don't speak anything fluently. I'm probably not even fluent in English, but uh, a little bit of French and Spanish. That's great. Well, I know that I can say this to you, but this is so interesting because most people, my experience is that most people so much uh, this this is that humanity in large. Um, oh boy, am I going to get, am I going to get emails? That humanity in large are liars. Yeah. Until, until we get to this point that you were talking about and, and we've been talking about, which is. When we become awake and we become conscious and we we get our truth and we get clarity about who we are and what we are and where we are headed and what we're going to do, then all of a sudden we stop lying because we don't need to anymore. I agree with that. I, I, Go ahead. I was going to say one of the things I I think on a on a larger scale right now is that homo, homo sapiens do we lie. And um, I think that as a species on this planet, we also sadly learn more from the destructive behaviors than the positive ones for some reason. And I think some of what's happening in our world today, the amount of anger, the amount of deception, um, the lack of truth hmm. is both keeping us from it and, and, and creating this underground movement where people are seeking it because it's almost like we're seeking it because we have created a destructive situation. Homo sapiens seem to function better when you give them that, well, my mother had a term for it, but we'll just say, you know, um, use the facilities or get off them um, moment. <clears throat> and um, and it's like we've created that right now. We have we have a time where, where there's this wonderful movement underneath a lot of the negative that we've look at what we've done we've damaged the planet the water the air the food our bodies and it puts us in that place of um, well use the facilities or get off them start manifesting and, and, and in a large way all of this has become acceptable right yeah I believe so and, and what's interesting is like like there is a group of people and and I don't have them on the show for that for this reason. And that group of people <laughs> I'm just gonna be specific about politicians. <laughs> politicians on the show is because they have perfected a master lying. Yes. To, to make it to be an art form. And and I am just not interested to have them on this platform. You know, politics fascinates me in that I think we've again created our own destruction. We've created um, a, a platform where people, like you said, can make a profession out of lying to us, and then we get <laughs> mad at them, and we've allowed them this stage. Instead uh -huh. of electing, you know, Bob the plumber, we elect Bob the professional politician, and then we're mad at Bob for being a professional politician. Hmm. Really? Where's the logic there? <laughs> Am I wrong? No, no, no. I think the logic there is that 
is that the, the underlying core reason for this is because we don't want to be responsible. Exactly. That we would rather uh, elect all these people to office and just blame them why things are not working uh, mm -hmm. the way they should. I 100% agree with you. I, but I agree with you. I think, and it, it's it's interesting to me because it, it's what we do internally, individually, playing out on a big screen, on a bigger platform. In other words, we do this to ourselves. We're afraid of being responsible for our own actions, for telling our own truth, for finding our truth and being responsible for who we are. So we project that out and we and look at politics. We're, we're projecting it and have created a world platform of it. And it's a, it's a theater. It's like... It's like, mm -hmm. I just smile. I mean, when I see it, I just smile. I mean, there's this guy, and I don't want to use his name because I'll just, I'll just give him more power, but uh, th this guy that, um, how do I even say this? Uh, the guy in New York that's going for uh, becoming the mayor in New York. Oh, uh, yes. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. And, and, <laughs> and after all that happened last year and all the things that he admitted, and he finally was asked to leave because it was an embarrassment. He's back. I know. I and, saw that. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, oh my God, what, what is the matter with us? It's like, <laughs> why does this guy even get a microphone? Yeah, because I mean, do you really want to have somebody represent you that that does that? No, but we like a train wreck. It's why we watch <laughs> soap operas, right? We love a train wreck. The gape or delay on the highway. We want to look. Ooh, look at that. Instead of, you know, finding a way to correct it, finding a way to take part in our own our part of it. No, 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 no. Let's watch it on. Let's watch the show. Buy a ticket. Eat some popcorn, and and go about continuing the farce. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I think it's it's called or I call it. Let's entertain ourselves. Because if we entertain ourselves, then we don't have to deal with. The reality. The reality and the reality of our own misery. Well, and our own choices. Mm -hmm. If we're mocking someone else or looking at someone else, saying, "Oh, oh, I can't believe what they just did," we're not even taking. We're not looking at ourselves at all. It's, it's wonderful. It's a wonderful distraction. I have I have a client that that um, I work with who's who's one of their biggest struggle is distraction. They're distracted from their work by everything. And, you know, one of the tasks that we've talked about doing is, okay, well, let's work, let's make your distractions work for you. I want you to start writing it down when you get distracted, because then you're focusing back on what's distracting you and why, and we can rein it in. But it, you know, we've, we've made a, a culture out of it. Very interesting. So something just came to me again. So, I mean, this is just how I do my shows. It's just what you're talking about and whatever opens up. So I was witness to a very interesting conversation today where, um, let me describe who the parties are. Uh, we have some house guests right now, and a friend of mine is, is one of them who's been here now for two years and hasn't worked uh, okay. for two years. And uh, uh, there was a lady in the kitchen, and um, she's a house guest because they are in between homes. And um, they were actually doing something I would, I guess, call a role play. They were role playing, uh, you know, they were talking about how do you get a job these days? And uh, and my friend uh, was very clear about that he actually used the words, I am an expert at how corporate America uh, hires people, so I know how the system works. And they got into some detailed discussions, and then the other person, she suggested, <clears throat> well, maybe you should consider uh, going into some of these businesses and show up and introduce yourself makes yourself different from the rest of the people who are quote unquote applying online and getting lost in the system. Mm -hmm. Now the reason I'm bringing this up because the guy, my friend, was not at all open to the idea because he knew how the system works. Okay. It sounds to me like he just doesn't want to step up and make a change. <laughs> no insult to your friend. Exactly. Exactly. But it, he's excusing. Isn't that interesting, though? Isn't that yeah. Interesting? Yeah, he's talked himself into this wonderful, perfectly clear, I'm an expert, I understand it, and I can tell you this won't work. 
instead I, of saying, yeah, hey, yeah. I know how it works, and I worked it for two years, and I haven't got a job yet, but I know how it works. Yes. And I know what to do, and I know what not to do. Well, newsflash, no, no, you don't, or you <laughs> might be employed. <laughs> I, it's just a thought. I, I'm just throwing it out there. No, I didn't say anything. I didn't oh, say anything. hey, bravo to you. I think I would have opened my mouth. No, I didn't say anything because I, I had a funky relationship. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, my two cents is I'm pretty sure he's digging his own hole there. <laughs> but the reason I brought this up is not to talk about him. The reason I brought this up as an example that this is what people do, I believe, um, on a daily basis all the time. It's like we're acting like... like and, and this is something I'm, I'm really working on for myself, is that I, I believe that a big part of being conscious and being truthful to ourselves and to others has to do with our openness, our, our amount of willingness to be open for new things to come in. Because what we already know um, is really not used to me. What I'm after is what I don't know that I don't know. Does that make sense? It does. And, you know... Um what comes to mind for me is that there's this wonderful state of humility that comes from saying, I know lots of stuff, and all that's taught me is I don't know lots of stuff. <laughs> yes. Right? I don't know everything, yes. so teach me something. Share what you have with me, I, and, and I can learn more, and I can manifest. And, and we, I think um, a lot of times... There's that tricky ego that comes into play that doesn't want to admit, you know, that they, it might not be an expert in how the system works because um, then it's embarrassing or whatever, and uh, that's hard to own, and people yeah. are sensitive to that. And I don't think there's any shame in not knowing. I love not knowing because then I get to learn something. Oh, absolutely. It's like, it's like people, and I'm sure you know this. Actually, I would like to do, get, I would like to get your feedback on... Um, that people, people know all this stuff about life coaching, even that they have never done it. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> but yeah. they have opinions about how life coaching is. Oh, yeah. They're how experts. How it works and how it doesn't work. They're experts. They've yeah. been working it. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> how, does that, how does that work? I, I, so, yeah, I, you know, when I encounter people like that, I, I try to just smile and say, well, then, then you you're in a place that you don't need, you know. I, I can't work. I can't work with somebody like that. It's not. I don't see it as my calling to break down that barrier. I, you know, when when I when I'm working with people, it's because they've come to me and they want to grow. They want to change. They're looking at their life and they're saying, I know there's more, and I don't know how to get there. Sam, talk, show me how. Give me give me the tools. Help mm -hmm. me figure this out for myself. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are are still doing the. Um, I'm an expert, and I know everything. And life coaching is, you know, blah blah blah. I smile and say, "Well, I'm glad you're, that you know, that's okay. That's your opinion, and and I welcome it, and I disagree, and um, let's let's move on. Um, it's not. Good luck. Yeah, I don't have to be. I don't have to argue. It's okay. I'm really comfortable yeah. with what I have to offer the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. I. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. I again, what. Another example comes to me. I had this is going back several months. Well, not not no no. I, I actually I want to share a different example. So this is going back probably a little bit over a month. Uh, I was in a discussion with uh, an individual that um, I was going to entertain him to become a partner in one of our businesses. Okay. And um, there's another person involved. So the three of us actually got together on a conference call on a Sunday afternoon, and. Um, uh, really had a had a good conversation and and clarity about uh, who we are and uh, what we're going to do together and what our objectives are and how we're going to get to the goal that we set and um, who's going to do what. So everything became really clear and um, and I you know we agreed that the next step is that he is uh, he's going to draw up our corporate documents because he happens to be a CPA. Oh, nice. Yes. Guess what? What? I haven't heard from him. Really? <laughs> it's nice you got so clear, and then you didn't hear from him. Yes, I didn't hear from him ever since, and and I, I probably have a good idea why. Okay. One of the things, one of the things that happened is before we even scheduled that three-way co conference call, 
I made it very clear to him that it's gonna take it's gonna take some some cash for him to get into the business because we're not we're not willing to give it away for nothing. Right. So have it's a to business. In it, right? Yeah. And he asked me how much, and I told him. So after we agreed to exactly what we're going to do and who's going to do what, and he's we were walking away with the understanding that he's going to do the corporate documents. I sent him an invoice for the money. <laughs> oh, so you you wanted him to walk his talk, so to speak, uh -huh. did you? Well, that's interesting. And I, never, huh? and I never heard from him. Uh huh. Yeah. Don't you love and it when I, that happens? I did, you know, I did call him, and I did call him, and I did leave a message, and I was just wondering. You know, I I just basically said, you know. We had a great conversation. I thought everything was great, and I don't know what's going on, so I'm just calling. I, you know, I could make up all kinds of stories, okay. what's happening, but it would be probably wrong because I'm not you. Right. So please give me a call back and tell me what's up. And nothing. Nothing. Hmm. Isn't that funny? Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> and you know how I how I take it is like fantastic because. If this is how he hit, is this is how he is? I don't want him as a partner. Exactly. Matter and of fact, I don't want to get into find out, though. To find out six months from now that this right. is how he is. It's perfect. You found out it's before perfect. anything was signed. I mean, I love it when there's that kind of serendipity, and and I that you that when things move in, like that, it's a beautiful thing, and I'm always grateful for it. Yeah, yeah. You so know? it's like it's like I'm you know in the past when I really didn't pay as much attention as I do now, what feels good and what doesn't. So the fact that he disappeared from the scene doesn't feel good to me. Okay. No. And uh, I go, well, this is not the kind of partner, because guess what? If, if any other time, if we get into business and we have an issue, he's going to disappear. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a clear indicator of behavior. Yeah, and I said... No, this is not something I want in my in, life. In no. the day and age of texting bye -bye. and IMing and phone call, anything, he could have done anything to say, hey, I've had something yeah, happen. Send me an email. I, you know, I changed my mind. He chose totally. silence. Yeah, he, he chose silence. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. is communication all by itself. Uh, yes, it is. Silence sort of, is not non-communication. <laughs> uh, just like not choosing is still choosing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people don't always understand that, that I didn't choose. Yes, you did. You chose by not choosing. Yes, like yeah. like many many years ago, like if I go back thirty over thirty years ago, I used to. Oh, you're a, not that old. I used to have a partner. This is funny, that every time we had a conflict, either he had a conflict with me or somebody else. He, there were five partners. The way he was dealing with it, he would just get up and leave. <laughs> just, <laughs> just walk out. Just walk out. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Isn't that nice? It's better than screaming. <laughs> but it's a little odd. That's yeah. a that's a tough one. Because I rather have somebody that's gonna express themselves and I don't even care if they're gonna yell and scream. Because I'm gonna ask them, you know, if you're gonna yell and scream, then let's reschedule. Let's yeah. pull off and come back together when, you know, we are a decent human being again. Yeah. And uh, but I I I rather have that than somebody walk away because yeah. somebody walks away I can't do anything. It's They're very un it's uh, it's very uncomfortable and disrespectful actually mm -hmm. is what I find it. I I grew up with a, a girlfriend who used to hang up on me. She would just hang up, and I, <laughs> I I I said to her one day I'm like seriously you know. You, you just hang. Well I I'm like oh, okay do you understand how rude that is? Do you get yeah. that? Like um. Yes. And, and it, yeah, well, we don't talk much anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, I get it. So how do you how do you assist or how do you help people to actually begin to tell the truth to themselves and um, and to others? How does that process work? Uh, what what tools are you using to do that? Um, I am very fond of asking odd questions. I like to. I like to ask people, you know, when they bring a situation to me and they start telling me, well, you know, this and this and this happened. I like to ask them, why, okay, why are you interpreting this this way? Why, why did this hurt you? Why did this make you uncomfortable? And usually, you know, well, they said it in this tone of voice. Okay. And then in, in, there's a, a 
what, there's a name for it, and I can't think of the name for the type of questioning. Socratic questioning. You know, circle it down and down and down and down and down. And uh, in the beginning, I often, unfortunately, people get confused before they get clear. But what it starts doing is it starts to help them shift their perspective a little bit and, and look at their participation and how they're receiving information. And then you can start asking them to look at, well, why are you receiving information that way? You're receiving information like you're a victim. Well, are you? It was a conversation. You're, are, you, are you playing a victim or are you feeling victimized? You know, and then you can start, and, they, and slowly what happens is they start to ask themselves these questions and they start to look in a little deeper at their motivation and, and things and you, you start taking it deeper and I'm deeply fond of the inventory. I love personal inventory. I think it's one of the greatest tools. Yeah, you can, I, I do it all the time. I think it's the greatest tool ever. Do you find that people have um, lots of stories and they love to tell them? Yes. And they attach to their stories? Yes. They, they identify so heavily with them. It's like when you take ah. their story, not that my job is to take it away, but when you ask them to step away and, and release, they get a little scared because they identify so much with their, their role in it. And, mm. and it's a beautiful thing when they realize that, yes, their role is key because it's their story, but they have more power over it, and it, it doesn't it, it isn't their identity. You know what I mean? Like they're complete, yeah. Yeah. and they're and when they manifest being complete, then they bring a complete character out into the world. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I again, what comes to me is I I remember somebody I coached, a music coach, um, this lady who's actually in New York right now, um, that uh, she was very attached to this story of hers. And uh, she came to me to help her, and so I just had her write it down. And um, I just said, just write down the whole story, everything that you just told me. And it was probably like three, four pages long. And then, you know, we made an appointment, and I had her read it to me. Okay. And after she read it to me, I said, well, I'll read it again. And it's funny because <clears throat> she was very significant and serious about it at the beginning. And then right. the second time, I said, well, I'll read it again. And she was a little bit relaxed. And then after she got to the end of it, I said, well, read it again. And, and I made her read it at least a dozen times. Really? By the time we got to the dozen version, she was she laughing? Laugh. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> like, how ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, right? Because she yeah. could finally step back and go, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Light bulb. And both of us just started to laugh. And I said, okay. It's time to go have a drink. Let's get a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. That's 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 awesome. That's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, let's see. How are we doing? We're doing good. Yeah, so, we're doing great. Yeah. So, um, you're doing this uh, this program. Is it a program or is it is it just a brand? The Truth Revolutionary. Um, it's more of a brand mm -hmm. I have a program that I but that I I it, it's kind of the core but I I prefer to tailor what I'm doing with each individual person and how they need to be motivated and how they need to be um, and where they where they want to go because I don't think there's a cookie cutter conversation for anybody I really don't so um, the truth the revolutionary is more of a brand it's an idea that I would love to I would love to create a truth revolution. I would love to have impassioned people looking for their truth, expressing it, getting it reflected back at them by the people who are also reflecting truth, because I think we, we're reflections of each other, um, and get people excited about manifesting themselves. And I think when we do that, we change the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's no doubt in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because... We, we're we're so different, but at the same time, so much alike. And uh, all of us. I mean, I, I I do not see really any longer like differences in skin color or sexual preference or male and female. I I right. really I, I somehow I just got over all of that, and it's like not important to me anymore. It's no, I it... human being and their soul is what's important to me. Oh yeah, it could be cased in anything. I I couldn't care less. Uh, how I, it's packaged, I I don't care. No, I really don't. I, the only thing that matters to me, oddly enough, as I meet people, is that feeling of 
Are they truthful? Are they real? Are they are they showing me themselves? And I don't care if themselves is a hot mess. Are they showing me themselves? Mm -hmm. If they're wearing a falsehood and a, and that fakeness, then they're not people I I I don't want them in my personal circle of of friends. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, got it. Same, yeah, same here. So how do you how do you screen that? How do you screen people in terms of are these people that you want around you, or are these people that you don't want around you? What's what do you use? What's do you use some kind of a tool? What's You're gonna laugh because I go back to that internal barometer. I go back to that uh, internal sense of uh, harmony yeah. and joy that you you call. There uh, are people that you meet and you immediately it's like bam, you know, you feel so connected and it's this beautiful thing. Um, and there are people you meet that you go, oh no, no, that, that feels it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm moving, using my hands here. Sorry. Um, no, I use them all the time. <laughs> I talk with my hands. <laughs> um, and I, I used to before I became more aware and more conscious in my life and choices. I used to ignore those sensations, and I did dumb things with people I didn't need to be associating with, except for that they got me where I am. So I'm grateful. And now. I trust that vo I trust that feeling or that that voice, whatever you want to call it. I trust that sense of harmony when I meet someone and it's it's beautiful. I open my arms up and and love and and enjoy them and am grateful and thankful for what they bring to me and hopefully what I bring to them and 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 want to learn from them and share and know them. Mm, fantastic. Do you have kids, um, Sam? Uh, no, I have I have no children. I'm I'm the world's greatest auntie, and I have cats and dogs. I am a stepmother though, <laughs> and a step grandmother. Ah, oddly okay. enough. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, are are you are you looking to have kids or no? No, actually, I uh, I knew that my whole life. I mm -hmm. m my mother loves telling people that I was a scary child who would. At four years old, be like, I'm not having babies. When all the other girls had dolls and baby dolls, um, as I as I got older, some of it was because I came from an abusive family, and I really never wanted to. As I became more conscious, I felt responsible for my actions and my choices, and I did not want to hand down my baggage to a child. Knowing that people who were abused, it is very hard not to hand down some aspect of that. And I, children are sacred, mystical creatures, and I was not willing to do that to to a child. So no, I was always well aware I did not want children. Interesting. Uh, you're not even open to uh, just. Uh Adopting? Oh, we've talked about it, but I'm old, and and my husband is. <laughs> yeah, I don't have energy. Um, You're not old. Oh, hey, let me tell you. And my husband's eight years older than me, and he has um, four children that are older. And like I said, they have children of their own. And you know, we've talked about it. I would. I used to really want to adopt. We talked about it heavily. So young. I mean, it's like, oh my god. Oh, oi. No. Uh, I mean, come on, come on. If you asked me, which you didn't, but, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna force this subject. Uh, if you asked me to guess how old you are, I would say you're in, high, you're in your high thirties. I, I, I'm, I tell people I'm 65 because I look fabulous for 65. <laughs> um, I, I do. I really, I'm, I'm phenomenally beautiful for 65. I am 45, and I am proud of it. I love every mm. gray hair. I love every wrinkle. I've earned them. I don't but, see any wrinkles and I don't see any gray hair. Uh, well, there's a lot of and gray. And this is in HD, so <laughs> if, if that was there, I would see it. Well, at the end end of the day, I love being an auntie. I love being a grandma, mm -hmm. and I have a wonderful partner in my husband, and he has raised four kids, and he he's tired, and and <laughs> to bring, he is, and and a kid takes a lot of energy, and yeah, you know, to be yeah. to be sixty when they're graduating, can you give them the same if if someone came to me and, and the situation arose and it was a miracle or, or someone need you know, I'm not saying I would turn away a life but it's not um, it's not we've talked about it we thought it about be, it you can manifest, right? I don't believe it will manifest for me unless one of my nieces or somebody is in need I don't believe it will manifest no yeah 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 no, that's cool 
All right. So, um, and 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 the reason why I'm asking, um, and I th I think you can still you can probably still give us some uh, really good feedback, is that if you did have kids, and in a way, you you do have some in your family, even though sure. you're not their natural mother, but um, how would you how would you make sure that um, this truth revolutionary uh, idea that you have is instilled in the kids? Uh, I wish one of them was here. They would tell you, Auntie Sam is always straight up. <laughs> you know where she stands. You don't you don't lie to her. She doesn't accept it. She doesn't lie to you. If they ask me, I. I Children are so phenomenal to me, and I think that they are, without a doubt, they're just phenomenal and incredible, and they're our future, you know, and all the children in my family I've treated the same way, which is with um, sacred respect and truth. I didn't, I've never lied to them. Um, I was actually just at one of my niece's graduations, and I cried. Her mother, my sister, didn't cry. Me, I'm sobbing. You know, and my niece comes up and hugs me. She's like, you were crying. I love you. You're the best aunt. You know, because she's so profound and amazing to me. And um, But she'll tell you, I would never lie to Aunt Sam. She wouldn't lie to me. So wow. th by giving them reality, even with uncomfortable times when things are bad and looking them in the eye, granted, you have to tailor it to the age. You can't tell a four-year-old kid the same thing you can tell a 14-year-old. But when you... When you show their soul the respect of treating it as a soul and telling it truly, I love you, this is this and this is that, and letting them see that you know you care, you love, you're going to help them and protect them and keep them safe, as that's what we're supposed to do for children, you know. Yeah. Well, I I believe and I and I see this from my own, you know, personal view. And experience that teenagers have much harder time these days than ever before. It's it is terrifying to me. I can't imagine being a teenager today. It was bad enough when you know I was a teenager and dinosaurs still walked, but what kids are faced with today, the the, the amount of not just information they're bombarded with, but perceptions and bad ones about self-image and you know music. look at the world Mu oh my what music it's I sound really old now it's just noise yeah music um, words it's very disrespectful yeah. and Parents don't have time for the kids these days. they're not there the kids are you know yeah granted I'm from the latchkey generation so to speak but kids today are in a way they're so abandoned you know and and even ones that are loved are left alone to in some ways, mature were too soon, without actual guidance. That make you know what I mean? Like they're left to make these decisions that, because our world is also not really allowing them to grow up, right? They, you can only be a kid until you're six, and then you should be a CEO. Do do you can you offer up any solutions uh, as to how do we deal with this tremendous problem? You know, it's near and dear to my heart, um, and I I think it comes back to parenting consciously and and you know when people ask me why don't you have kids you, you're so passionate about yeah, I just did. I just did. yeah right <laughs> and and I have the only answer that I think is the solution which is conscious choices conscious parenting I think it takes more to be a parent than a male and a female than, it's, it's not for everybody really and and I think you're right we uh, we, we take it all like uh, we're going to go buy a car. We do. Think about it. How many people today are like, oh, I'm 25, I've got a good job, now I need a spouse and I need a baby? Uh -huh. I'm sorry, why? Are you emotionally prepared to give? Are you, you know, or, or they have babies because they think it's going to fix a relationship or, and I think children are so sacred that to take them so lightly, it, it kind of turns my stomach. And I'm probably offending somebody out there, so I apologize. Um, that said, I think it is not to be taken lightly. The, the gift that children are is not casual. To enter into it so casually is is what's the word? A travesty. There, there's my word of the day. Yeah. And I, yeah. I think I think that that's the solution, though. At the end, 
conscious parenting. And if you're going to have that baby, then then you, you make choices and that child comes first as opposed to, I'm going drinking tonight, get a babysitter. You you need to be aware this is a and, – and you're the example because that's the other thing people forget. When you have a child, the father and the mother are the example of how to be a man, how to be a woman, and who you're going to mate with later. So raising a little boy, daddy's who he's going to grow up to be like, mommy is who he's going to grow up and marry. So mommy and daddy misbehaving with each other, but they still love Junior. And, and when mom and dad aren't real and they're not honest and they're not present, Junior sees, as a man, I don't have to be present and my wife doesn't have to be nice to me. So we've created this in the first five years of life because we took it so lightly and weren't paying attention and manifesting. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, perfectly. Okay, I'm so not passionate to, about that. <laughs> not to the subject, but I'm going to. Yeah. So, how do you how do you feel about uh, health these days? I I am really I have really become a real proponent of health. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, I'm I'm connecting health with consciousness, and yep. I'm connecting it to a point where um, the level of our health um, equals the level of our consciousness. What do you think about that? I think I halfway agree. Okay. I think that. And only because I've lived through a pretty debilitating disease, and my health is, um, that's pretty good considering my history. I'm, I'm actually rather proud of myself. That said, um, I, I actually, the illness pushed my consciousness living through it. Mm -hmm. It's part of what pushed me into a better state of consciousness. Um, that said, I believe I manifested the illness because I was lying to myself so much and because I was my soul was sick so I think it's kinda twofold does that yeah it's yeah yeah it's interesting it's it's uh, wh where I'm having some some <clears throat> some issues with it is that is that from my own personal experience um, we we have the power as a matter of fact we are the only ones that have the power to make ourselves ill Mm -hmm. And disconnect ourselves from our source, uh, from our, um, you know, our higher self, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And, uh, and we're the only ones that have the power to, to um, be driven by confusion, deception, manipulation, fear, and force, versus the truth and versus clarity, uh, versus love. Mm -hmm. And um, when we don't choose love and we don't choose connection, then uh, we disintegrate our physical bodies. And well, that's. We, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. I was going to say, um, I wrote a little, a, a really short paper on it, and one of the terms I use is dis ease, and, and, and as in D I S ease, unease. Because mm -hmm. when, we, when we're not truthful, like you said, and we're not picking truth, and we're not picking love, and we're not picking clarity, we create a, an, an unease in ourselves, and that oh, allows. Oh, of stress, not just. Not just physical stress that we can feel or emotional stress we can feel, mm -hmm. but but internal, Cellular. the way our organs are <laughs> working and how our system was designed is in tremendous stress. Absolutely. I, that I agree with wholeheartedly. Like I said, I believe I manifested my own illness. I mm -hmm. do. And in manifesting it, I, I, I took, I took, I learned from it and I used it to push myself. Yeah. But you see, what I'm seeing uh, when I go outside into the world is that people are running to the drugstores to get <laughs> beef. People oh, everything. Are, people are not paying attention that it's a much it's a much bigger not, not that it's a much bigger problem. It's just that it, it's just that it, you know we have this tendency to and I certainly did it myself. I have the tendency to look for all the solutions outside of myself. The drugstore is something outside of us. Um, don't you think it also has to do with our instant gratification need for some reason? Like, oh, there's a pill for that. I'll just take the pill. It's simple. It's easy. I don't have to work. Yeah, it's, it's a shiny. I call it a shiny object. The pill is yes, a shiny object. Yes, it you know, is. The doctor is a shiny object. He'll fix it. Yeah. He'll fix it. Yeah. No, you're just going to write a prescription, and you're just going to not feel it, uh, but you're still going to have the problem. And, I, you know, that cracks <laughs> me up because I one of the things I've I've, I've actually – coach a few people on is don't take a painkiller 
And they look at me like I'm nuts. What do you mean? I have this ache. <laughs> do you understand we that? We have the power to heal ourselves. But not only that, you have a pain because your body's telling you don't stress this particular spot. Mm -hmm. And when you numb it out, then you do worse damage. What is wrong with actually listening to your body? We don't. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. We need to do it more. Yes, exactly. We have more people like you and me um, expressing that people need to go inside. Yes. The, the answers are inside of us inherently. Stop looking outside because it ain't out there. No, no, it's not. And, and I, I couldn't agree with you more, to be honest. It's, the internal world is an incredible, beautiful thing. And I, I don't understand why people are so timid and afraid of it. And, and, <laughs> yeah, and it's it, funny. People go to church to experience God. Yes, and I don't That's understand funny. that. I mean, God is living within us. Look at, look at this. Oh boy, look go at. <laughs> <laughs> go for it. Look, look at you and look at me, just for an example, because this is what we got. But this thing, this, you know, and I, I still, I'm looking on Google. Who came up with the word human being? Please help me find, find it. I don't know. <laughs> Who created human being? I don't know. Words. I, I, I don't have an answer. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but but if you look at me, look at you, just look at anybody. I mean, this is this is magical. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and for us to want to go somewhere to experience this magic and unwilling to experience it within us. It's craziness. But the funny thing is, to me, the funny part or the odd part is that it's all within us anyway. Yes. Anything you can experience because you're drunk or high or, or you know, even if it's, um, what's the word, uh, um, oh, a dervish. If it's a religious fervor and you're, and you're moved by the spirit, it's, it's internal. It is all within us. It's all meant. You can feel it. You can find it. It's in there. And when you go seeking it outside yourself, it's almost like you're saying, "I'm not good enough to manifest it, so I I need to. Uh, it's out there." As opposed to the truth, which is that we are all sacred and magical, or uh, and mystical, and it's each one of us is incarnate in that fashion and. When you accept that and can breathe and say, hey, I'm here, this is who I am, share in the light, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a, it, well, it just does it all for you. It's the magic pill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, I want to give you this opportunity uh, to just share with our viewers uh, how would you like to be contacted if they want to pick you up on your life co coaching, especially the Truth Revolutionary uh, concept that you've created. Thank you. Um, absolutely. I would love it if people came to see me on my site, which is uh, www.truthrevolutionary.com. Um, I work on my blog pretty regularly. I am also very excited about working on some video shorts. I'm working on a series called Let's Talk About um, on some pretty big stuff, the, the things that people don't necessarily want to talk about, little, little bits to help people start thinking about things differently. Um, and I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, my contact information, comment on the blog. Feel free to send me a note. See if you want to work with me or if uh, I can help you or redirect you. I'm happy to talk. Awesome. Fantastic. And what's your, what's your address for your uh, website? www.truthrevolutionary.com Fantastic. Well, this is an example of a conscious hour. How, how did you... Did you feel this was an hour? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not even occur? close. How did it occur for you? It was like whoosh. It was just a great <laughs> conversation. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, well, I, I really enjoyed getting lost in you. Yeah, thank you. Ditto. In your concept of the truth and your truth and thank the you. truth revolutionary concept. It's been, it's been like a wonderful dessert. Thank you. Say good night in Russian. <laughs> uh, my Russian is so bad. <laughs> uh, maybe I could do it in Hungarian. Okay, do that. What do, that. do you want me to say? 
uh, uh, I don't know, say good night or something. I wouldn't know. You could say anything. Okay. <laughs> you asked the Kivanok, and that oh, was uh, nice. good night. <laughs> well, thank you. You asked the Kivanok, and yeah. Isn't that, a, isn't that a weird sounding language or what? Actually, I, I had a Hungarian babysitter, so for me it's kind of lovely. It takes me back to some nice memories. Do you remember the Hoytvaj? No, but I, do, I remember Chicken Papakash. Oh, okay. Well, that's fine. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> My favorite is, dinner. That is just so... That's just beaten to death, the Chicken yeah. Papakash. Okay. Um, all right, great. So I enjoyed every every conscious minute, and uh, I, I just want to remind everybody to always come back to the Mind, Body, and Soul show. We usually have our shows on Thursdays at 2 o'clock Mountain, 1 o'clock uh, Pacific, and 4 p.m. Eastern, and then we also have the shows on Friday evenings, like at 7 o'clock this evening Mountain Time, and 9 p.m. Eastern, and 6 p.m. Pacific. So don't forget to don't forget to tune in, and if you can't tune in live, that's perfectly all right. Come to our site at um, com and just watch the replays. Thank you so much. Thank and, you. Yeah, your show will be actually available within about 15 minutes on our Thank site. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll be in touch. Thank you so much. Take care of yourself. You too. Bye.